Hello friends, this is Durga again uh, from Technology Mentor slash IT University and currently we are talking about uh, Big Data and Hadoop introduction and uh, as part of this video I will continue um, uh, on that topic. Uh, at this time I am talking about Oracle architecture and uh, if you think about Oracle architecture, uh, typically Oracle will have a network mounted storage. When we talk about network mounted storage, there will be a storage racks in which you can actually uh, install uh, as many hard, uh, hard disks as possible uh, uh, um, into that. And once these hard disks are stored, it will be formatted and uh, there will be pools created out of that storage and that storage will be used for our database to store the data. And uh, on top of storage rack, we, we will have a network switch and we will have a bunch of database servers which will be created as, as a cluster. And these things uh, are connected with this network switch. Uh, so it, this network switch will be used whenever uh, we need to read data from, uh, for, from a table um, by issuing a query. And also for private interconnect, uh, you will have another network switch. Uh, uh, so typically Oracle databases will have three network switches. One is for private inter interconnect which you see at the left and the other one is the network switch which will connect your database servers and storage and uh, there could be third one also which is for public uh, connectivity uh, so uh, and uh, and then uh, um, this uh, green uh, vertical rectangle uh, uh, that is part of uh, storage layer will be mounted on all these database servers so that all these database servers can actually read data from uh, uh, by issuing queries via tables. So if you think about it, there is uh, several disadvantages. I will try to cover few of them. One is, let's say your table is a 10 GB size table without any indexes. Let's say there are no indexes on table. And if you have to count on the table, what you have to do when you issue the query, what will happen is that 10 GB data that is there in this vertical green uh, rectangle has to be transferred over network, so it's called as network I/O because it is reading, uh, it is uh, doing I/O input output over the network. The entire 10 GB data, even though it is uh, connected uh, through uh, fiber optic, has to go through this network switch, uh, which will incur some lag, or uh, it will incur some overhead to transfer this amount of data into the database server uh, from which the query is issued. So when you have cluster, the query can be issued uh, from one of these database servers and uh, the data has to be transferred to that database server which issued the query. So if you think about it, uh, this network I.O. can cause significant issues when you are talking about at the scale of uh, Google or Facebook or Yahoo or LinkedIn and even uh, in, um, uh, in the enterprises. Uh, that is one, uh, one disadvantage. And also to uh, 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 to have transactions uh, at the time of uh, um, if, you, if, you, if you want to update data or insert data into these tables or delete them it has to be go through transactions and, I'm, uh, and as I have mentioned to you earlier uh, uh, transactions typically uh, um, um, involves multiple database records and these database records have to be committed or rolled back as a unit so when you have this cluster database, uh, the data which is uh, uh, which needs to be updated has to be maintained across uh, database servers uh, across all the database servers in our cluster, and that's where this net, uh, private interconnect uh, will come into picture. And uh, uh, and uh, and then if you are familiar with Google, uh, sorry, Oracle database, it has global enqueues so that uh, uh, it it uh, maintains the consistency of your transactions. Uh, even if the transaction uh, uh, goes to multiple uh, database servers at a given point in time. Uh, and uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, mission critical applications, that is the key. You need to have that. But for most of the non-critical, non-mission critical systems, it is not uh, uh, needed. But still, uh, Oracle have to uh, have the overhead, even though there are no complex transactions, um, because the way it is developed to support the transactions. So these two are the many, uh, these two are main and, uh, 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 these two are the um, main issues which can actually, uh, sorry, these two features are, uh, can cause uh, huge issues 
when it comes to uh, scalability and the network switch and also global enqueues uh, which uses private interconnect so that's where the traditional rdbmss cannot scale uh, after certain uh, limit after, uh, after certain limit it, it will follow law of diminishing returns uh, and uh, uh, after the certain number of servers in a cluster whatever you do uh, the the returns uh, uh, will actually go down uh, by increasing the uh, nodes in the cluster this is the uh, uh, very high level architecture of oracle and this is the architecture of storage uh, sorry hadoop so in case of hadoop uh, if you see storage and processing are uh, local to each other on each of the nodes in the cluster and you will find hundreds of uh, these kinds of nodes in cluster and they have a concept of map and reduce so when it comes to map the entire processing will happen locally uh, but when it comes to reduce uh, it has to do some network uh, 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 network io uh, but the amount of network io that needs to be done for reduce purpose for most of the use cases will be only 10% uh, or less compared to the original data side uh, size so for that reason uh, the amount of network io will go down uh, uh, significantly and uh, local io will be leveraged because storage and processing are co-locating and uh, uh, now you can actually get uh, 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 much better scalability um, when it comes to uh, processing uh, uh, heavy volumes of data so this is the main difference between uh, hadoop or even any big data and uh, uh, oracle architecture in oracle architecture you have network io and uh, for every operation uh, it has to use the network switch in the middle uh, to read the data from the table that is stored in this vertical rectangle and uh, uh, perform actions on that whereas here your storage and processing are co-located and the network uh, io will be used only in the phase of reduce uh, and uh, reducers uh, will be used for aggregations and uh, joins uh, and for many other purposes network io is not needed or we can minimize the network io and then uh, the left hand side are masters which will coordinate this effort so if i have to uh, let me go to the next slide so uh, these top two are for storage masters and the bottom one which says processing master is for processing and when i replace with uh, um, actual hadoop terms um, uh, uh, the storage components are con uh, considered as hdfs and these are hdfs masters and for processing they are called as map reduce and that map reduce can be supported by yarn or map reduce classic there are two flavors of it and we will understand those things in detail later and if i want to put uh, actual terminology um, uh, the daemon process like in oracle you see pmon smon and all those things right similarly hadoop also have daemon process like data nodes name nodes secondary name nodes uh, uh, and uh, then uh, um, for map reduce again there is a different uh, 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 kinds of daemon process and uh, if i have to replace those things uh, for hdfs on all uh, uh, slaves where we actually store the data uh, we have data node uh, 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 as a daemon process which will be supporting this data store uh, data storage and the masters are called as name nodes and there will uh, there is another uh, kind of helper to the master called secondary name nodes and for map reduce uh, there are two frameworks one is classic and second one is yarn and we will look into details later at this time it might be work kill for you so this is the typical hadoop cluster in an enterprise you will have bunch of nodes which are considered as slaves and uh, then you will have a few masters uh, at, uh, in in a uh, even for a poc Uh, where we will uh, we will primarily have 10 to 12 node cluster uh, 3 to 4 of them will be considered as masters and rest of them will be considered as slaves but in a very large enterprise there could be up to 8 to 10 masters and there could be hundreds to thousand uh, hundreds to thousand of uh, slave nodes so the right side uh, rec uh, rectangle represents all the slave nodes and left side these three rectangles represents masters and uh, when it comes to storage uh, there will be uh, uh, the hdfs will be running on all the nodes in the cluster and the these two masters have hdfs co master components in them 
and uh, for MapReduce, uh, in the latest version, you will have Yarn. Uh, in the earlier version, you can say MapReduce itself. So this is how uh, um, the cluster looks like, and all these will be connected through network switch, or there can be uh, a handful of network switches. One network switch might not be able to uh, support everything. And these network switches will be very powerful, and there will be uh, uh, many ports in, in those, so that all these slaves are connected to, uh, to this network switch, and also these masters are connected to this network switch. And then uh, uh, if I want to put the actual terminology, here all the slaves have the data nodes and uh, uh, masters have, uh, uh, there are two masters for uh, HDFS and we have name node and secondary name node for that. And uh, uh, all the slaves have node manager and the master will have resource manager if you are talking about YARN. And then there will be a uh, handful of network switches which will be connecting all these. Okay, and this is Hadoop uh, uh, ecosystem. So this is Hadoop ecosystem and uh, at the bottom we have the HDFS which is foundation for everything. And there are applications which use MapReduce as framework and uh, MapReduce is primarily batch. And if you want to uh, do certain things in real time, then you have to use non-MapReduce. Uh, and uh, uh, all the uh, as part of the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, we have all these tools that runs using MapReduce as a framework. And uh, um, these ones will use non-MapReduce. Non-MapReduce is not a framework or technology; it's just a logical group of. Uh, 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 it's just a logical uh, explanation of uh, 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 logical explanation to say that. There are a handful of applications uh, or technologies uh, which uh, which use uh, which does not use MapReduce, uh, but they use their own uh, 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 way of uh, uh, they, they use their own technologies uh, to process the data. But if you want to do batch processing, MapReduce is the way to go. Uh, if not, uh, uh, you can uh, use non-MapReduce tools based upon your use case. And also there will be something called in-memory computing, uh, uh, which is Spark, uh, and you will see all those things and you will understand all these terms by the uh, end of these videos. So now we will talk about the uh, difference between Oracle and Hadoop. Uh, again, I'm going back to Oracle architecture. You have storage, you have network switch, you have database servers, and they're connected with uh, one network switch and also you have a public uh, uh, network uh, sorry, you have another network switch for private interconnect between the uh, database servers. Uh, that being said, um, if you get into the little bit uh, details, uh, all the uh, cluster of servers will have, uh, and there will be cluster of servers. In uh, As part of our picture, we have seen three of them. And they will be, uh, they, are, they, they are supported with uh, back backend process called PMON, FMON, etc and they will be running on all the nodes in the cluster. And also there are uh, uh, components like global enqueues to support it. And for storage, you have network mounted, uh, 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 you have NFS, network file system, which will be mounted to all database servers. And for software, you will have, uh, uh, typically uh, you, see you, uh, uh, you see something called uh, U01, uh, app, Oracle, and you will have all your uh, uh, Oracle binaries uh, installed on those things. And uh, you, you need to have same version of binaries on all of them uh, so that your uh, uh, clustered Oracle database runs without any issues. And then you, you will see parameter files called init.ora, pfile, sp file, etc. And uh, also the, uh, the backend process which I have already covered and memory should be same across all the nodes in the cluster, otherwise you will run into issues. And memory structures, uh, you, you have PGA, SGA, etc. And SGA is in turn have shared pool and database buffer cache as well. And network, typically you will see three network switches, one for interconnect of nodes, one to connect with storage, and the other one for public connectivity. And uh, as you see uh, here, uh, you have servers, you have storage, you have software, you have parameter files, uh, you have backend process, you have memory and memory structures. Take any technology, you have to think in these lines. 
probably the way they it organizes uh, uh, or the way it works behind the scenes can be significantly different but in the end if you have to uh, understand the fundamentals of uh, any software technology or uh, any database technology these are the core things which you need to keep in mind and uh, even uh, uh, when it comes to hadoop these are the things which you need to understand uh, how the servers will be configured how the storage will be how you will install the software what are the parameter files what are the back end process and how memory is managed and how how it is done over the network so if you think in these lines and if you build on top of that you can nail down any technology very easily that's why i have emphasized you know, on this slide quite a bit and in case of hadoop architecture as i have explained already uh, you have storage and processing co-located and you have masters uh, for storage as well as processing and for storage we use uh, hadoop distributed file system uh, for processing uh, uh, we have map reduce as well as non map reduce based systems and now we will see the hadoop ecosystem again uh, so hadoop components there are many of them at the core you have uh, distributed file system which is foundation and uh, you have map reduce as well as non map reduce based systems uh, or technologies for map reduce you have uh, uh, and uh, map reduce based technology you have hive scoop pig mahout uzi flume etc for non map reduce based you have uh, technologies like impala hbase spark and presto and uh, uh, then uh, um, i we are almost uh, there with the introduction and as part of the next uh, next video i will try to demonstrate how the hortonworks distribution uh, um, uh, uh, looks like at the high, very higher level and also i will demo how to copy the data how to run a map reduce job uh, i will not explain everything in detail but i will run sample commands uh, just to get your hands dirty and you can connect to those things quickly um, in the subsequent classes and uh, uh, um, so we will see that as part of the next video or next couple of videos I hope you are enjoying the content so far. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment on my videos. And if you like the video, please click on like. Thank you. Bye.